Hey y'all. So I thought I would try another video and start from the very scratch today, weighing out ingredients and showing you what I do right down to the minutia. So this is my oven. This is where I'll start. I'm using the Ninja Foodie 10 in 1. This is the DT251, which comes with the thermometer, but you don't have to get the thermometer. It's an extra expense. The DT201 works just fine. What I have measured out today is 100 grams of almond flour, 80 grams of powdered sugar, don't mind my feet, 80 grams of egg whites, this is 80 grams of caster sugar, and in with that is a pinch of egg white powder and a pinch of cream of tartar, which I am going to whisk in there before I put it in with the egg whites, and that helps keep it from clumping. I use a Breville handy mix scraper hand mixer and a Mobile copper bowl. The copper bowl just um, creates a reaction with the egg whites that helps stabilize the meringue, and I really like that I have control by using a copper bowl and a hand whisk um, to know when the meringue is finished, and it's just my preference. Uh, I'm also going to use a pinch of salt in with my dry ingredients, and I today I'm making pink shells, so I am using Guzman uh, powdered color from Russia. So I'm going to start getting some of this mixed together and sifted with the dry ingredients. I'm going to sift the almond flour with the powdered sugar. I'm going to add my pinch of salt in with my dry ingredients. And um, then I will be back and we will start whisking egg whites. Okay, so I'm ready to get started whipping my egg whites. And so I have my egg whites in my copper bowl and I just have a little bit of um, the Guzman cherry pink food coloring in there. It doesn't take very much, so I'm going to try and um, start whipping my whites and see if that's going to be enough color. I might have to add a little bit more, but it's kind of a see-as-you-go sort of thing. So I'm going to get started, and I'm going to start on slow speed. I usually take it up to three to get started, get the color mixing in. The color always looks really, really dark in the beginning. It will lighten. I'm just going to let them get a little foamy. I'm on speed three on my mixer. The color looks pretty red right now, but it won't be. All right, I think that's foamy enough. I'm gonna start adding in my sugar, and I have um, whisked in the egg white powder and the cream of tartar, so it's all homogenous so nothing will clump. I just do it in like three additions. I've never done that whole adding it slow thing. It just doesn't seem to make any difference for me. Ah, you see we're starting to get a little pink now. So now that the sugar's in, I'm just going to crank it up to four and let it go there for a while as it starts to thicken. You might hear my oven's warming up in the background. Okay, so I can see this pink is a little lighter than what I want to do, so I'm going to stop this and I'm just going to add a tiny bit more color. Got to be careful with the Guzman because it is very highly pigmented. I absolutely love it, but I can easily get a color that's darker than what I want. 
without trying too hard. So we'll see how that goes. Okay. There we go. That's more like what I wanted. These are going to be uh, frosted animal cookie macarons when they're done. Typical. I have cats at my feet, so if you see tails in the video or anything, you'll know why. Alright, so that's been going for a bit. I'm going to crank up to five, and we're going to stay at five until we hit stiff peaks. These can be a little bit darker for frosted animal cookie, but I don't like to put too much food coloring in because sometimes if it's really dark, they can be bitter and they always stain your tongue, and I just don't like it. So I try to stick to lighter shades. This is a nice pink. really good for French method. about six minutes and I think that's pretty good. For my taste, that's pretty good. So I will take these whisks out and show you. All right, so if you turn your whisk in the bowl, you can see how thick it is. You pull it out, it's really clumped in the whisk and the points are sharp and you've got sharp edges going on there. See how you've got nice sharp edges and the point stands straight up? That's how you know it's done. Hope I'm showing that well enough. I think it went off camera there for a second. But the edges are really sharp and the point is really sharp and it stands straight up and the meringue that's in the bowl is in a really good clump. So we are done. That is ready. Let's 
So I have my dry ingredients all sifted together in this bowl. I'm going to add half of it. As you can see, it is, or here I should say, it is now paper bag playtime, because why would it not be with mom in the kitchen trying to make a video? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put about half of this in. I do it half and half just so that I can make sure it's mixing well and I'm not getting any big lumps. And then I just cut in. Try to make sure I get everything off the bottom. This doesn't have to be completely incorporated, it's just the first half. Okay, now I can dump in the second half. I'm going to do the same, cut in turn, cut in, around the bowl, so try to get everything from the bottom up to the top and cut in. Once I get everything mostly incorporated so I can't see any more dries, I usually try to stop cutting in and I just fold. Alright, so I don't see any more dries, so from here I'm just going to fold. So this is just regular folding. No special names, no special anything, just folding. People have been doing for hundreds of years. Over the top, over the top, over the top. Just keep going over the top. Great to make sure everything from the bottom is coming through. Over the top. Just keep going like that. I don't press my batter anymore. Might or might not take a few minutes longer. Sometimes with the regular batter it does. But it's worth it because it keeps you from inadvertently pressing out too much air. So again, it's just over the top. Over the top, over the top, over the top, and then I scrape around, make sure I have everything, and I'm flipping the entire mass over every once in a while as I go over the top. And as before, once you get the hang of it, you can go a lot faster. you can see what I'm doing. I'm not pressing, just folding it from the bottom over the top. Just slow it down a little. Maybe I should do it slow all the time. My shoulder appreciates it slow. <laughs> Alright, you don't have to be afraid of it. You get the hang of it. Okay, I'll show you where we're at right now. We're not there yet, but you can see where we're at right now. It's still pretty slow. And it's not really settling in on itself much at all. Still way too thick. So I'm just going to keep going. Still not going to press. I'm not in a hurry. The point is to get it to the right consistency in the right way, not in the fastest way, if that makes sense. I think 
there's a lot of terms out there for how people do macronage. And I think it can be confusing for people. But it really is just basic folding that people have been doing for hundreds of years. So, try not to get confused or intimidated by the names that, you know, other people have put on it. Everybody has their own way of describing it. It's just folding. And if you prefer to add your meringue to your dry ingredients instead of adding your dry ingredients to your meringue, you can do that too. See how we are. Yeah, we're moving a little bit faster, but we're still not there yet. I get to be a bit thinner than that. You can see this does take a little while, so don't feel like, oh my god, I've been going at it forever and it's still not getting there. It will. Just be patient. Sometimes when you're going around and around like this, it feels like you're at it forever, but you're really not. close but still not there. Can you see how it's moving? Still a little bit slow. Not really not really settling back in on itself. But it's a lot smoother than it was when we started. Did you notice that? That's the other benefit to this taking a little bit longer is you have a chance to really incorporate all your stuff, all your dry ingredients. And it makes for a nice smooth batter. Smooth tops. Again, I'm not pressing at all. It's not necessary. It will come to consistency without any pressing. And that is just about where I like it. If you can see right up in here, this is kind of, the edges are blurred now. It's starting to settle back into itself. But it's not completely back in. You don't want it to settle entirely back in on itself. If it does, you've gone too far. So I'm going to call this because I think this is good. So I have my piping bag here. Count one, two, finish. 
one, two, finish. One, two. And that's how I'll go. And that helps me get consistent sizes. I still don't get them perfect, but until I am a machine, which I will never be, always be a little imperfect. Pretty happy with that batter actually it's settling pretty well so I do still bang a little bit mostly I like to just whack it with my knuckles you can see I hope the bubbles coming up and it doesn't disturb the batter too much sometimes over banging will render them lopsided. So then I just go back and get rid of any craters on the surface. Alright, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to set that one aside and do the next one. And when I'm finished piping it, I just release pressure on the bag completely and then just circle off. Make sure you release pressure on the bag entirely or you'll end up with a nipple anyway. a little piece of almond skin I get occasionally, so I just pick those out. Yeah, there's one here too. I'm get the Smooth that little lump out there. Pretty good. Get that one a little extra help. Okay, now they're ready to go in the oven. Just trying to get a good angle on the oven there, but I don't have much counter space, so hopefully this is okay. So I'm just going to stick it in. And the other one I just did. set my timer for 17 minutes. Because the uh, regular shells don't need that extra 30 seconds that the chocolate shells do. So they're in now and I will be back when they are ready. I'm gonna pipe my other two trays and stick them in the other oven and we'll be back. Okay, I'm back and my shells are done. Um, my timer went off and so I cracked the door and turned the oven off and left them in there for an additional two minutes and now they're ready to come out and I'm gonna show you. Come. And they're 
there's the tray. Hopefully you can see. Nice and shiny. Good gloss. Nice feet. I do not like tall feet because I want full shells and so the way I do things is geared towards having smaller feet and full shells. So there they are. I'm sure if I tap them. Yep. Nice and solid sounding and full. So I know that I don't need to break those to check the insides. I probably wouldn't anyway. Uh, I've just gotten to that point now where I know that they're okay and I just leave it at that. So that's it and I hope this video is a little bit more informative than the last one and if you have any feedback for what else you'd like to see if I try to make more videos, let me know. Thanks! Bye!